Okay. Germany was unpopular. What's the proof of that? The Weimar Republic was unpopular. There were two attempts to overthrow it. Okay? There were two attempts to overthrow it. Remember we looked at the political spectrum, the circle? Vaguely remember that? Okay. There were two attempts to overthrow it. The first attempt was in 1919. That's when the Spartacists, the communists, tried to overthrow the Weimar Republic. All right? They were from the left. Popular governments do not end up with their people trying to kill them. Yeah? Our government might not be liked by everyone. I'm not planning to shoot anyone. <coughs> not yet. You might be, because you're going to have to pay nine grand to go to university. Okay? But the Spartacists, they're the communists. They don't like the Weimar Republic. They try to overthrow them. And the second attempt to overthrow the Weimar Republic comes one year later. That's the cap putsch. And that's the putsch from the right. So the left wing and the right wing. Got to do this because I'm standing in front of you. The left wing, that's right, isn't it? The left wing, they don't like the Weimar Republic because the Weimar Republic is me in the middle. They don't like, my hand does not like me. So they try and kill me. The right wing, they don't like me either. So one year later, they try and kill me. Now, if one person tries to kill you, then you could consider that that's unfortunate, isn't it? Two people try to, try to kill you. That's like, is that more, of a, more than a coincidence? Hang on, hang on. Maybe I'm unpopular. Okay, so there are two attempts to overthrow the Weimar Republic. The communists, the Spartacists in 1919, and the cat putsch, the right wing, in 1920. Yeah? That, I mean, we taught you about inference, didn't we? I can infer that the Weimar Republic was not popular because people were trying to kill them. Okay? So, briefly then, these two attempts. Okay? The Spartacist attempt by the communists. Lack of support, badly planned, it was put down quickly. But interestingly, the Weimar Republic, me in the middle, I didn't do it. I didn't kill the communists. Yeah? They're here trying to kill me. I'm not strong enough. I get these guys to kill them. Yeah? Now, that makes me look weak, doesn't it? Because I'm not strong enough to do it myself. But I'm skillful enough to make these guys do it for me. Yes? As the Spartacist Rising the same as the Revolt? Spartacist Rising, Spartacist Revolt, same thing. And that's the one where they ended up all in the river. They all got shot and dumped in the canal, yes. The um, you know Spartacists are the communists? Yes. Oh, I'll come on to that in a moment. I'll come on to that. Don't ruin the story. All right? So once again, I'm the Weimar Republic. People are trying to kill me. That's not good. I'm not popular. But I'm not strong enough to fight these people myself. The Spartacists are killed by the Freikorps, the right-wing soldiers. And they're not doing it. They're not helping me because they like me. They just hate these guys even more. But the fact, the fact that I can get the Freikorps who hate me to do the dirty work for me shows you that the Weimar Republic had brains. Okay, you're aiming for the higher grades, guys. That's very important. The Weimar Republic were persuasive and intelligent, and they got people to do their work for them. Okay? But no sooner had the Freikorps helped me kill the Spartacists than the Freikorps, under Gustav Kapp, Wolfgang Kapp, my apologies, Gustav was his brother, I'm making that up, they try and kill me themselves. They almost pull it off. Guys, popular governments aren't shot at by their own people. And once again, the Weimar Republic can't deal with the cat putsch. The Weimar government run away. But they get the left-wing workers simply to not cooperate with cat. The cat putsch fails. 
All right, so we've got a weak government, very unpopular government, constantly being attacked by its own people, but who remarkably skillfully play one group off against another. Yeah, they divide and conquer. They're weak, yes, but they're also very clever. And the real trick to the higher grades here, guys, is not to immediately say the Weimar Republic was rubbish and was weak. It's not the big picture. The big picture is they still survived. The left wing, I've got to get this right, yeah, the left wing, the Spartacists, were killed by the right wing. And then when the right wing, in 1920, tried to take over, the left wing, Did killed with them. Them? Pardon me? Did they no. The point is, the point is that the Weimar Republic used people who hated each other more than they hated them to do their work for them. All right. Yeah, they're, but they're clever. They can manipulate the situation. But ultimately, popular governments aren't shot at by their own people. Okay, as it says, both attempts weakened the Weimar government because they lost the support of the army as well as losing the confidence of the country. Yeah? Governments that are weak and ineffective and being attacked, no one likes to see that. That doesn't instill confidence. But in both cases, they showed that they needed other groups in order to survive. But by getting other people to help them, they showed that they were skillful. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that takes us up to 1923. This is when the German economy goes wrong. Right? It's called the year of crisis. All right. The story. Germany is being punished. 6.6 .6 billion pounds. Do you remember that? Okay. They have to pay that back bit by bit by bit by bit. In 1923, they fail to make their payments. Uh, they default on their payments. And the French and the Belgians, as they were allowed to under the Treaty of Versailles, march straight back in to punish the Germans. Yeah? They occupy the Ruhr, yeah? the German industrial area. Right? If the Germans aren't going to give us the money, we're going to go in and we're going to take the money. Now, imagine the Germans felt pretty bad already. This is just like rubbing salt into the wound, isn't it? Really, really insulting. But the French and the Belgians, they spent four years fighting and dying against the Germans. The French and Belgians are angry as well. So the Treaty of Versailles has hardly brought about peace. The Germans don't fight back. They can't. They got 100,000 men. The French army had 2 million in it. They're not going to fight back. So what the Germans decide to do is they say, right, OK, we won't fight. We just won't cooperate. And the term for that is that they passively resist. They passively resisted. Okay? We just will not cooperate. In other words, they went on strike. Now the problem is, when you go on strike, you don't earn any money. And if your government's asking you to go on strike, you'd expect the government to pay you, wouldn't you, to make up for the word money that you're not earning. But the German government didn't have any money that's why the French and the Belgians have invaded the Ruhr. <coughs> so the German government does what every three-year-old suggestion is to a shortage why of money, they is they print more money. Why can't they print why more money? Yeah. Right, we'll come on to that. They print more money. That's all it is, isn't it? Paper. They just print more paper money. The problem is, my goodness, I have a prop. The problem is you can't print money. Because if you print money, you cause inflation. Okay, You cause something called inflation, which means the more money you print, the less value the money has. Now, we will deal with inflation specifically next time, because enough of you are still looking at me rather vacantly, thinking, I don't get it. All right, we'll deal with inflation next time. Okay, But... They print so much money that the money becomes worthless. The picture over here. This woman is heating her home by printing, by pouring money into the fire. It's worthless. It's worthless. 
it, it is worthless. Now, it's amusing. There's pictures on the front of the textbooks of kids using wads of notes as building blocks. Thinking, ha ha, that's very funny, isn't it? Gosh, things must have been really bad in Germany. What happens if your entire life savings, that you've been saving all your life, lost all their money? So not only have you lost the war, not only have you lost um, relatives and loved ones in the war, but five years after the end of the war, your money is made worthless. Now, you remember the saying that we had with Germany, people, people vote with their wallets. Remember that expression? People vote with their wallets. When? When your government makes you feel wealthy, you like your government. You can almost ignore other things that your government are doing that you don't like. That's all right. That person is making me feel wealthy. I'll vote for them. But the minute, the minute your government makes you feel poorer, you're out, mate. Look at, look at Gordon Brown. The moment the economy went bad, Gordon Brown, well, his time was numbered, wasn't it? It's an impasse period, isn't it? Okay. All right. This is a disaster. Now, I would write down the expression, people vote with their wallet. I've got a room. On the back. People vote with their wallets. By all means, get some more paper, Patrick. Okay. I can't begin to imagine what would happen, how I would feel if everything I've worked for and saved for went up in a puff of smoke. Well, yeah, you'd have chaos on your hands, wouldn't you? If I didn't have the money to pay for food to feed my family, how how long? Yeah, how long would it be before I broke the law and stole it? How long would I put up with a government saying, "Oh, don't worry, we'll sort this out," before I say? No, I've had enough of this, and you, you, you have law-abiding people who suddenly riot and go on the rampage. Gustav Stresemann comes along, the German Chancellor. This is the man, Jake, who saves the Weimar Republic. Yeah, he was cool, calm, and collected. Yeah. When you've got a national crisis on, yeah, you don't want a politician running around saying, oh my God, this is a crisis, help me, I don't know what to do. He said, we've got to look at what the problem is that Germany is facing, and we've got to deal with that problem. Okay? So he was elected, that's what he said he'd do. We'll deal with this crisis. Right. What's causing the hyperinflation? Well, why are we printing the money? It's because everyone's on strike and passively resisting. Right. Stop the passive resistance. The money we've got is worthless. We've got to get rid of that currency and replace it with a new one. Yeah? He takes in the old currency and burns it. Yes? And replaces it with a new currency, the renting money. He got the army on his side. Army are on the right wing of German politics. Absolutely essential. You've got 100,000 armed men on your side. Chances are you're going to be all right. Yeah? He gets the army on his side. Okay? And then finally, he arranges the Dawes Plan. A deal with the United States to give Germany lots of money to get the German economy started again. It all comes down to economics. They get the money to start the economy going again. That's what Stresemann does. And in doing that, Germany starts to recover.